It's time for CIBL Biz Tips, bringing you actionable strategies to grow and improve your business. Prepare to become civilized. What's up, Central Illinois? Welcome to CIBL Biz Tips, where we bring you concepts and strategies to grow your Central Illinois business. I'm Derek Hayden. I am here with Garrett Ulmer. We are your co-hosts, and we are joined by special guest Bob Woodard with Illinois Public Risk Fund. If you joined us in session one, you found out how work comp is calculated and some of the things you can do to can maybe control your mod and that work comp isn't always just about the rate. Um, there's some things you can do to control your own destiny with work comp. Um, so today, Bob, what I would like to explain, um, especially newer and growing business owners, who needs work comp and what happens if you don't have it? And, you know, this is actually one of those areas that's very cut and dry. And it still honestly amazes me the number of employers that I hear about uh-huh. are not carrying work comp. And it it, it just completely befuddles me. Um, State of Illinois is very simple. It's a mandatory um, product that you have to have in place. So if you have part-time employees, full-time, doesn't matter if it's just one, you have to carry work comp mm-hmm. and there's really no skirting that you're filing w-2s the state of illinois knows who has employees and who doesn't and it's really not that difficult for them to figure out are you carrying work comp or are you not so you know this is one of those mandatory benefits that just when you are sitting down trying to factor in all of your you know your growth your expenses things of that nature this has to be one of those line uh, items that you have in your budget. Yeah. Uh, As far as not doing it, I I would (laughs) hate to be in those shoes. Um, Minimum $10,000 fine. Yeah. So that's where you're starting. Mm -hmm. And then if you continue to be out of compliance, $500 per day, if you fail to pay the penalty, even you as you know, one of the owners as, as a partner in the business, you can be held personally, personally liable for these penalties. And so it's just not a risk that I would advise anyone to, to take. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and $10,000 is a lot of money, but the liability of, you know, you have somebody on staff that does get hurt and you don't have it. It can, I mean, $10,000 can be minuscule compared mm-hmm. to the amount of, you know, yeah. of an injury that you could face if you don't have it either. Yeah. So, and, you know, and I've definitely seen employers where they just don't do it. Sure. But where I, I run into it the most is employers that, you know, forgot to pay the bill, it ends up lapsing. Those are the ones that end up oftentimes in those situations. And unfortunately, if your bookkeeping isn't in place, you may not figure that out until you have that claim. And then, yes, not only are you looking at penalties, you're looking at significant liabilities that could far exceed the penalty itself. Yeah. You're absolutely right. Right. Yeah, I will tell you, one of the common questions that Garrett and I hear, especially from smaller, more contractor type businesses, is, well, I just have a guy that helps me in the summer. I don't need, I don't need to work comp. He just helps me when I need him in the summer. Well, you kind of need them. You kind of need work comp for that as yeah. well. So um, they're like, well, I just pay him cash. I'm like, okay, you're going to pay cash whenever he is sitting in a hospital bed. If he falls off his ladder. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, it's a, it's a tough, this it's a tough discussion with business owners, especially small business owners, because that money that they're, they, that's their livelihood is the money they're bringing in and, and they just see the premium dollars going out but they luckily have not seen the $10,000 fine yet. Yeah. They've not had an employee get injured. You know, it's just one of those things that you need to assume that you're going to have work comp if you have anybody working for you. Absolutely. Yeah. And um, I it have always seems an- like in that scenario, Derek, it's, you know, it's a close acquaintance or a good friend or family member. And, you know, I always ask, well, is their significant other going to be okay if he gets hurt? You know, because that's the, you know, they're going to have a family most likely that they're going to have to provide for. Yeah. And I feel like their eyes are like, Probably not, you know, so. <laughs> right. Yeah. That is a good question. Well, and I, it, it can even extend to this, you know, if you have subcontractors, are you getting yeah. certificates of insurance from them? If not, the work comp yeah. may or may not sure. extend to that. So yeah. it, right. 
again, it kind of goes back to what I alluded to about having a good agent. You know, you guys are experts for a reason. Pay attention yeah. to what they say and the advice they give you. Yep, exactly. I, I will say I had um, I had a client that never told me he had employees. And I got a call one day saying, hey, um, I just got a bill in the mail. Or I had someone stop in from the state and they, they left a, a fine for me to pay. Do I have to pay it? Like, what'd they fine you for? He's like, well, because I don't have work comp. It's like, well, who, did you have someone working for you? He's like, yeah, I've got three or four people working for me. <laughs> like, okay. Well, yeah. <laughs> I'll tell you, this, this client is no longer a client for other reasons. But it was just one of those things like... You know, we've, we've had the discussion before and, you know, you, as an agent, we can't help you unless you tell us what you need help with. You know, we can ask questions all day, but if you skirt the issue and, and I won't say lie, but you, you don't tell the full truth because you don't want to pay more. I understand why, but it could ultimately end up in a fine or someone getting hurt and you're, you're liable for those injuries. So <clears throat> basics of it, Bob, sounds like if you have employees, you need work comp. 100%. Yep. Yeah. No if and ors or buts. Awesome. Well, that's a good spot to stop for session two. Um, thanks for joining. In session three, we're going to talk a little bit about what happens if an employee is actually injured. And what's that process look like? So and, uh, until next time, make sure you're subscribing to the CIBL podcast on whatever platform you listen to the podcast on. While you're there, please leave us a re review. It'd be greatly appreciated. You can also find us on social media, mainly Facebook and LinkedIn, and connect with Garrett and I personally there as well. Until next time. Y'all been civilized. Take care. Thank you for listening to this episode of the Central Illinois Business Leaders Podcast. You can find us on Facebook at facebook.com slash CIBL podcast. You can also follow us on LinkedIn. Don't forget to subscribe and leave us a review. It's the civilized thing to do.